Hey GED students, I got sent this problem on Facebook by Savannah and she wasn't sure how to start uh, with this inequality. So directions were just solve and graph. So we needed to solve the inequality and graph. Well, great GED practice because the GED loves us to give you inequalities, especially inequalities involving negative signs. So now we're Savannah got stuck was she wasn't sure what the first step was to do. So I asked her, what did you try first? And she told me a really typical answer. A lot of GED students say that they are going to do uh, this first and they would be wrong. So this is the move that she tried to make. And I'll tell you why it doesn't work. Savannah saw that minus three and she said, you know what? I'll get rid of it by adding three. And I understand why that's your instinct. It sure does look like that's a minus three, but look at the way that negative three is positioned. That negative three there is shoved up against these parentheses, meaning that negative three is multiplying by that entire grouping. It's not subtracting from the grouping. It's multiplying the grouping. If you want to get rid of a multiplier, you don't add. You do the opposite of multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. So one way you could start this, Savannah, is to divide by negative 3. Now, of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'll divide that by negative three as well. Now, why did I do that? Well, multiplying and dividing are opposites. So multiplying that grouping by negative three and dividing that grouping by negative three are going to cancel. And what I'll just be left with on that left-hand side is just the P plus one. It's not even grouped anymore uh, because I dealt with uh, that number that that grouping was multiplied by, multiplying by. Then on the other side, you can do it in your GED calculator if you're bad at negatives. Don't worry. You would always have a calculator uh, while you're doing these kinds of problems on the GED. But negative 18 divided by negative 3 is just positive 6. Now here's an important part. Circle this, highlight this, whatever you need to do. Get it in your notes. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, there is a consequence. There is a consequence. So any, whenever you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number. So, oh my goodness, I divided by a negative. I have got to flip the inequality symbol. It actually changes the relationships between the two sides. It makes the bigger side smaller and the smaller side bigger. So if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you've got to flip the inequality sign. It did say less than or greater to, or let me say that again, dear goodness. It did say less than or equal to, I'm going to change it to greater than or equal to. I just flip that guy around. And now I'm almost done. P is almost alone. Now I need to get rid of a plus one. And this guy really is adding with P. And so I will do the opposite. Of course, the opposite of adding is subtracting. And I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what my new inequality will be. I'll get P plus one and minus one will cancel. Now adding and subtracting never ever changes your inequality symbol, so that's gonna remain the same now. And then six minus one is five. So I get this, P is greater than or equal to five. Now how do you graph that? So two things you need to know, okay? One thing is you need to know if you have an open or closed dot. So five is my important number, so I'm gonna put a dot on five, but should my dot be an open dot or should my dot be a closed dot? Do you see how that it has the or equal to sign? When you have that equal to sign, that's when you use the closed dot because it says the number's included. So I'm gonna just put a nice closed dot on five. And again, the reason why I'm putting a closed dot is because my symbol has this, the or equal to part. Okay, wonderful. And now how do I know which direction to go into? Well, I could just read it. It says P is greater than or equal to five. So I could just shade in the greater region. Um, or I could pay attention to that arrowhead. I mean, that's where that arrowhead comes from. See how it's pointing off to the right? The right is the greater than direction. So I'll just color in the direction of the arrow. Careful, this only works if you have the letter on the left. P is greater than or equal to five. Wonderful. 
Great, so this is solved. Now, here's the deal though, Savannah, that wasn't the only thing you could have done. You told me first that was what you tried, and then after that, you actually tried to multiply first. You could have done that too and gotten the same answer. Let's take a look at how that would work. So same exact problem, but you know, we started by getting rid of that multiplier of negative three. We could also start by using it, okay? So we always have two options uh, when we're solving. We can either simplify, if we know how to simplify, or we can work to isolate, get rid of something. So we tried getting rid of the negative three, but what if we just used it? What if we did uh, with it what we were supposed to do? So like you said, Savannah, that negative three is shoved up against that parentheses, meaning it's multiplying. Could I do the multiplication? Yeah, I sure could. Distributive property allows me to multiply through. So I could do that. So negative three times P is negative three P. And negative three times positive one is negative three. And I've just simplified the left-hand side. I, I obeyed the operation signs, so that's not gonna change anything on the right-hand side. And now I could work to get P alone. I've got two numbers I need to get rid of. It looks like they're both negative three, but notice that these two numbers are doing something different with P. Okay, so look at this one. In this one, the we have the negative between p and 3. That means this guy is subtracting with p. In this one, the negative 3 is shoved up against p. It's multiplying. Remember, when you're solving, we're going to work that order of operations backwards. So we're going to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So I'm going to take that minus 3 away by doing the opposite. Of course, the opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. I'll add 3 to both sides. Now, let's see what my new inequality will be after making that change. Of course, subtracting 3 and adding 3 are opposites. They cancel, so I have negative 3p. Adding and subtracting never, ever affects the inequality symbol, so that'll still say less than or equal to. And then negative 8 plus 3. Again, you could do it in your calculator, but that is... Oh, I'm like, negative 8? What? I just had a miscopy, you guys. Go back up and correct your work. If I can do it, you can do it. It was negative 18, sorry. So negative 18 plus three is negative 15. Dear goodness, can I just go on an, on a side and say, if the math teacher can do that, you can do that. Watch for miscopying on your GED. All right, <laughs> so uh, I have negative three P is less than or equal to negative 15. And now I'm almost done. P is almost alone, but I have to get rid of this negative three here. Now, what's this guy doing? Like I said, it's all shoved up against P. Therefore, it is a multiplier. I must get rid of it by dividing. Make sure you divide by exactly what you want to get rid of. You want to get rid of a negative three. Of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to divide that side by negative three as well. Now, let's see what happens. On this left-hand side, multiplying and dividing by negative 3 are opposite sets. So going to cancel. P is going to be alone. On that right-hand side, and again, you can do it in your calculator, but negative 15 divided by negative 3 is, hey, 5. Very cool. And then once again, as always, watch out. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, do you remember the consequence? That's right. We're going to flip that inequality sign. So I'm not going to see less than or equal to anymore. I'm going to see greater than or equal to 5. And once again, look at that. We have P is greater than or equal to negative 5. Same answer. Whether we get rid of the negative 3 multiplier or we use the negative 3 multiplier, we're going to get to the same answer. So of course, we'd graph this the same way. We have an equal to symbol, so I use a closed dot. And P is greater than or equal to, so I'm going to go off in that greater than direction off towards the right, the way the arrow points. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.